All right, so get this. Okay. We're talking test match pressures on every run, every wicket matters. Pakistan, they need to really dominate to clinch the series. Mm. And what do they do? I don't know. Well, they pull off a move that has everyone just scratching their heads. What's that? They stick with the same two bowlers for almost an entire day. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. It's insane. That is unheard of, especially in a sport that is known for its kind of strategic bowling changes. Yeah. We're talking Pakistan's spin duo, Sajid Khan and Noman Ali. Yeah. And they bowled a staggering 89.5 overs straight. 89.5 overs. Unchanged. Almost an entire day's play. Okay. My mind is officially blown. This wasn't some like casual Sunday picnic game. This yeah. was like high stakes test match cricket against England. Yep. What on earth was Pakistan thinking? Well, it all starts with the pitch and Raul Pindi. Okay. The groundskeepers, they basically prepared a surface that was practically begging for spin bowling. Oh, really? It was dry dusty and turning from ball one. So Pakistan, recognizing this, you know, golden opportunity, mm -hmm. they decided to go all in on spin right from the start. So they saw the conditions and thought, let's unleash the spin twins. Exactly. Okay. It was a gamble, but it was a calculated one. Yeah. Both Sajid and Nomad. Yeah. They're highly experienced and skilled bowlers who thrive in these conditions. Okay. But even with a spin-friendly pitch, 89.5 overs is an eternity. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't the bowlers get tired? They would. You'd think so, right? Yeah. Wouldn't the captain want to mix things up at least a little bit? You would think. Yeah. But here's the thing. Okay. Sajid and Noman weren't just bowling. Yeah. They were absolutely bamboozling the English batsmen. Really? They were taking wickets consistently and keeping the pressure on throughout their marathon spell. Okay, spill the tea. Give me some examples of how they were dismantling England's batting lineup. So let's start with Noman Ali's dismissal of Zach Crawley. Okay. Crawley, a talented batsman, he's looking to score quickly. Mm -hmm. And Noman, in sensing this, he cleverly slowed down his pace. Oh. And bowled a slightly wider delivery. Interesting. Tempting Crawley to go for a big shot. Risky. The result? A thick edge that flew straight to the gully fielder. Okay, hold on. For those of us who haven't exactly spent our lives on the cricket pitch. Right. What exactly is a gully? Great question. So it's a fielding position close to the batsman, slightly behind and to the side. Okay. Perfectly placed to catch those kind of mistimed shots that fly off the edge of the bat. So Noman essentially lured Crawley into a trap. Precisely. Gotcha. It was classic spin bowling guile. Yeah. And it wasn't a one-off Sajid Khan, on the other hand. He found like a magical spot just outside off stump where he could consistently get his off breaks to turn sharply. Off breaks. I'm going to need a quick explainer on that one, too. No problem. An off break is a type of delivery where the ball spins away from a right-handed batsman after bouncing. Okay. It's kind of like a curveball in baseball. Right. But with a whole lot more nuance and subtlety. But so Sajid was bowling these beauties that would pitch on a good length mm -hmm. and then deviate sharply, making it almost impossible for the batsman to play with any confidence. Wow. He ended up trapping both Ollie Pope and Joe Root. Yeah. Two of England's best batsmen with these deliveries. Oh, wow. They were plum LBW, no question about it. So he was basically making the ball dance. Absolutely. Yeah. And the pitch was certainly playing its part, turning square at times. Oh, really? There was even one delivery to Ben Duckett. Yeah. That barely bounced. Oh, my goodness. It just scooted along the ground like a groundhog. Wow. Duckett, completely bamboozled, just <laughs> stood there in disbelief <laughs> as the ball crashed into his stumps. I can only imagine the look on his face. Even the commentators were struggling to explain what they just witnessed. Okay, so we've got the spin-friendly pitch. Mm -hmm. We've got the masterful bowling and some truly bizarre deliveries. Yeah. But was it all down to the pitch? Was it that much of a minefield for the English batsmen? It was definitely challenging, no doubt about that. But to attribute their success solely to the pitch would be a disservice to Sajid and Noman's skill and artistry. Okay. In fact... Sajid himself pushed back against this notion after the match. Really? He emphasized that even on a helpful pitch, mm -hmm. you still need a high level of skill variations in pace and line and the ability to read the batsman's mind. Wow. To be truly effective. So it wasn't just a case of bowl and hope for the best. Not at all. Okay. These guys were thinking several steps ahead, adapting their deliveries based on the bats, the match situation. Right. And even the state of the pitch as it continued to deteriorate throughout the day. Right. It was like watching a master class in spin bowling. It kind of makes you wonder, do spinners often get overlooked? Mm. 
I mean, they don't always have the same star power as those fast bowlers who can hurl the ball at 90 miles an hour. That's a really interesting point. We often see a bias toward fast bowlers in cricket. Yeah. You know, the speed, the aggression, the, the sheer spectacle of it all tends to grab the headlines. But as Sajid and Noman demonstrated, spin bowling with its subtlety, deception, and artistry can be just as potent, if not more so, in the right conditions. Right. Yeah. It reminds me of that article we read where someone said that ESPN Chris Info only really seems to care about Noman Ali when they can somehow connect him to Nassim Shah. Yeah. The young fast bowling sensation. Yeah. Yeah, that's a shame, really. It is. Spin bowling often gets treated as a sideshow. Right. Something to fill in the gaps between the fast bowling bursts. Yeah. But this match proved that spinners can be match winners in their own right. Yeah, their effectiveness was undeniable, right? Absolutely. Even the English batsmen had to admit that they were outclassed. Absolutely. Yeah. Jamie Smith, one of the English batsmen who fell victim to Sajid's magic, yeah. was full of praise for him after the match, called him a fantastic bowler. Wow. And let's not forget, this was Sajid's first test match back in the side after a long absence. Mm -hmm. Really? He ended up as the highest wicket taker in the entire series. Okay, so after this epic spell, they finally decided to make a bowling change, right? I mean, even the most durable of bowlers need a break eventually. They did. Uh, but it wasn't until after a mammoth, 42 overs. 42 overs. Zahid Mahmood came on to bowl. Yeah. And you know what? He was immediately hit for a boundary. Ouch, that's got to sting a bit. It certainly highlights the brilliance of Pakistan's decision to stick with Sajid and No Man for so long. Yeah. It wasn't just about giving them a long spell. Right. It was about recognizing that they were in a zone, they had the English passman on the ropes, mm -hmm. yeah. and any change at that point would have been a disruption to their rhythm. Right. Yeah. Makes you wonder, you know, if we sometimes get too caught up in just the surface level of things. Yeah. You know, we focus on the big names and we focus on the flashy plays mm -hmm. and we kind of miss like the real story that's unfolding underneath the surface. It's yeah. like we forget that cricket's a game of strategy right. and subtle shifts in momentum and these mental battles between bat and ball. Absolutely. And this match was a perfect example of that, you know? Yeah. Sajid and Noman's performance wasn't about raw pace or spectacular acrobatics. Right. It was about control precision. Yeah. And an almost telepathic understanding of each other's strength. Yeah. They were like a well-oiled machine, just working in perfect harmony to dismantle the English batting order. Precisely. They complemented each other beautifully. Yeah. Sajid, with his height and his ability to extract bounce from the pitch, was constantly creating those doubts in the batsmen's minds. Yeah. And then you had Noman, the wily veteran, using his flight and guile right. and variations in pace to just keep them guessing. So it wasn't just about individual brilliance, right. but it was about how their skills work together. Exactly. To create something greater than the sum of their parts. It's, think of it like a game of chess. Yeah. Each bowler was making these calculated moves, setting traps, anticipating the batsman's next move. It's amazing how they managed to maintain that level of intensity and focus for so long. Yeah. 89.5 overs. I know. It's crazy. That's like running a marathon and then deciding to do another one just for fun. Yeah. It's a testament to their fitness. Yeah. Their mental toughness. Right. And their sheer love for the game. Yeah. And let's not forget the strategic brilliance of Pakistan's captain, Babar Azam. Oh, yeah. He showed immense faith in his spinners. Right. Resisting the temptation to make changes even when the pressure was mounting. It was a bold move but it paid off spectacularly. It did. Speaking of bold moves, did the English batsmen make any tactical errors that played into Pakistan's hands? Well, you could argue that they were a bit too hesitant against the spinners. Okay. They seemed to be playing with fear, almost waiting for the inevitable dismissal, Yeah. rather than trying to dictate terms. So instead of being proactive, right. they allowed Sajid and Noman to kind of control the narrative. Exactly, and that's the thing about spin bowling. It's not always about taking wickets with every ball. Yeah. It's about creating pressure, building tension, and slowly but surely squeezing the life out of the batting side. Yeah, it's like a psychological game. Yeah. Wearing down the opponent's resistance until they make a mistake. Precisely. And Sajid <laughs> and No Man were masters of that art. Yeah. They were relentless probing for weaknesses and never letting the English batsmen settle. And how did this match fit into the larger context of the series? Was this a one-off performance, or were Pakistan really making a statement? This victory was crucial for Pakistan. Okay. It gave them an unassailable lead in the series, 
proving their dominance on home soil. Right. It also showcased their strategic flexibility and their willingness to embrace kind of unconventional tactics. So they weren't afraid to think outside the box and really challenge the traditional norms of test cricket. Exactly. And that's what made this match so compelling. Yeah. It wasn't just about the result. Yeah. It was about the way that Pakistan went about achieving it. Right. They played with confidence, with flair. Yeah. And with a deep understanding of the conditions and their own strengths. It's a reminder that sometimes the most effective approach isn't always the most obvious one. Absolutely. And sometimes the quietest performers. Yeah. Those who operate in the shadows of the superstars can have the biggest impact on the game. Hmm. Think about all the great spin bowling partnerships throughout history. Yeah. Warren and McGill, Mural Itherin and Haraf Kumbul and Harbhajan. These were duos that terrorized batsmen around the world, not with brute force, right. but with guile precision mm -hmm. and this almost supernatural ability to make the ball talk. And now we can add Sajid and Nuraman to that list. Yeah. They may not have the same legendary status yet, right? but their performance in this match was a glimpse of their immense potential. Yeah. They showed the world that spin bowling when executed with mastery and strategic vision, yeah. can be a force to be reckoned with. It's funny, isn't it? What's that? We often talk about the importance of adaptability in sports. Right. But then we don't always, you know, recognize it when we see it. We think of adapting as like changing your game plan, bringing in new players. Right. But Pakistan showed us that true adaptability mm. can also mean sticking to your strengths yeah. Even when it seems unconventional. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, they recognized that Sajid and Noman were in a rhythm. Right. They were exploiting the conditions perfectly, and any change would have just been a disruption. Yeah. It was a master class in reading the game and trusting your players. And it makes you wonder, mm. how often do we as fans get caught up in our own expectations right. of what a team should do and miss the brilliance of, you know, a more unconventional approach. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. I think we see a team go against the grain. Yeah. And we immediately question it. Yeah, exactly. But sometimes those unorthodox decisions yeah. are the ones that lead to the most remarkable victories. It's a good reminder to stay open minded. Yeah. You know, appreciate the nuances of strategy and just trust that these coaches and captains, they know a thing or two about the game. I think so. Speaking of appreciating the nuances. Okay. Let's talk about the historical context of this incredible spell. Right. You mentioned some of the great spin bowling partnerships earlier. Yeah. Where does Sajid and Noman's performance rank among the longest bowling spells in test match history? So bowling 89.5 overs unchanged mm -hmm. is a feat that's rarely seen these days in modern test cricket. Right. To put it into perspective. Okay. It's the longest unchanged bowling spell in Test cricket since 1957. Wow, 1957. Yeah. That puts it into a whole new level of significance. Yeah. It's almost like they've stepped out of a time capsule, bringing mm -hmm. back a style of play that we just, you know, rarely witness these days. We don't see anymore. It's a reminder that the history of cricket is filled with these incredible stories yeah. of endurance and skill and strategic innovation. Mm -hmm. And Saji and Noman have now etched their names into that rich tapestry. They certainly have. And they've mm -hmm. done it in a way that's both unexpected yeah. and utterly captivating. It is captivating. They've reminded us that spin bowling with its subtle variations right. and its ability to create magic on a turning pitch is an art form right. that deserves our admiration and respect. So as we wrap up this deep dive into the world of spin bowling, okay. I think the key takeaway here is this. All right. Let's not be so quick to dismiss the unconventional, yeah. the unexpected, or the seemingly quiet performers. Okay. You know, let's appreciate that subtle brilliance, the strategic depth, mm -hmm. and the historical significance of what Sajid and Noman achieved in this match. Let's remember that true mastery can come in many forms. Yeah. And sometimes the most captivating stories right. are the ones that unfold slowly, patiently, yeah. and with a touch of magic. And as you continue to follow the world of cricket, keep an eye on Sajid Khan and Noman Ali. Yeah. They may just be rewriting the rules of the game, mm -hmm. one perfectly flated delivery at a time. Absolutely.